the kubernetes package packaging of whatever you need in kubernetes is charts okay so what is helm chart is a collection of all the yaml files got it we already seen that collection of all the yaml files put together is one chart got it so imagine chart is like a box where you are accumulating all your yaml files for the sake of deployment okay so it allows us to create charts from scratch or in case you want to reuse some of the existing yaml files okay you can always move them into the helm folder and create a chart out of that okay or you can start writing from scratch and helm allows us to package charts into chart archive okay now packaging them as an archive allows us to represent them as one single unit isn't it so instead of deploying individual yaml files we can now deploy them as one single package okay so and then there are lots of um, chart repositories where we have uh, quite interesting ready made charts available okay so if you look at this figure carefully uh, it's not yet there okay if you look at this figure we have something called helm repository that is where lots of ready made charts are present okay so helm repo yeah we'll have a look at that so charts can interact with chart repository where our charts are stored so we can install and uninstall charts into an existing kubernetes cluster now that's something which is interesting when we say existing cluster what kind of cluster who provided that, that cluster well it doesn't matter it can be your cluster running on your desktop or laptop okay or it can be cluster running in your on premise server or it can be a cluster which is running in the cloud in the form of maybe eks or aks okay whatever so it works with kubernetes that means it doesn't matter where is kubernetes okay as long as it is configured properly you will be able to use helm to install and install charts means collection of all your kubernetes objects represented as one single unit now that is what is chart application chart based application and then after you deploy it you can do the release management of the charts so basically don't assume that after an application is deployed okay you can just forget about it no there always will be uh, evolvements isn't it application will always evolve there will be changes there will be bugs isn't it so you need to have a proper release management and helm allows us to do that so these are basically what helm can do for us so we have seen what is helm and we have seen what can helm do now the question is why we should use helm isn't it so there are lots of prepackaged charts available ready to use available as templates so just start making the relevant changes and use them okay so these are you can treat them as readily available blueprints in the repository okay so somebody has put efforts to create the charts ready made charts it's like it's like very simple okay just try to understand this suppose let's say you want to have something like a let's say text editor okay so would you develop it from scratch or would you rather use something which is readily available isn't it why do you want to reinvent the wheel okay so most of the operating systems do come with certain text editors or if you don't like them there are many other free and commercial options available isn't it on windows we get something like notepad if you don't like it then you can use something like notepad plus plus which goes beyond what notepad can do isn't it so not only it can do what notepad can do but it also allows us to work with different languages it recognizes code written for various programming languages it allows us to open multiple files because it has a tabbed based interface right so similarly if you go to say a linux based distribution we we always have something like vi editor or a nano editor isn't it you don't like it then you install some other more powerful editors there like for example you can use atom editor or maybe sublime text or if you want to treat vs code as just an editor we can install it and use it isn't it but it is much more powerful than that you know that right like that so it offers lots of pre packaged software it allows us to easily create and host our own packages because the way helm directory structure is laid out once you understand the directory structure right you can create packages based on your own templates okay now after this packages are ready you can install them in any kubernetes cluster 
it doesn't matter whether it is uh, on the dev machine or on premise or on the cloud it doesn't matter okay as long as it's a kubernetes cluster okay helm allows us to work with that cluster and then helm if you have done deployment through helm helm right you can query the cluster to see what packages are installed and running so which packages have been installed and which version of that package is running right now so you can query the cluster and get all those details okay and because it's a package management for kubernetes it allows us to update delete and roll back or view the history of installed packages that's that's the primary job of any package manager okay like for example uh, if you are coming from let's say python background right so one of the means of doing package management is using pip and through pip we can not only install python packages we can also have a look at what packages have been installed what is the version of that package so in case you want to upgrade that version you just have to give that new command called pip install give the package name and a specific version of the package isn't it so any any package manager should allow us to do that and helm is not different from that okay right and then of course helm makes it easy to run applications inside kubernetes okay um, although i'll wait for your views not today or not immediately in one or two days maybe after you do practice helm in a substantial way you'll actually start appreciating it okay once we start doing hands on you will realize okay this is much better than how we have been working with the bare minimum uh, kube control kube ctl command all these days okay but remember that is the basics that's the foundation okay and without understanding that you will not appreciate what helm does okay without understanding um walking may, might have taken you 1 hour and if you go using or uh, maybe if you go through a vehicle right you might have saved lot of time so you'll appreciate a vehicle only when you know how much time it takes to go there by by walk or maybe using bike isn't it bicycle or something like that then you'll appreciate the significance of a car helm is something like that unless you do things using kubectl you'll not appreciate what helm does okay right and let's continue further and just like any other software concept helm also has been evolving by itself isn't it so the one which caught everybody's attention was something called helm v2 up to v1 everybody thought it is just another way of working with kubernetes okay but when they released helm v2 that actually caught everybody's attention and they started appreciating it okay but helm v2 not only it was very powerful but it also uh, was kind of a security scare because helm gives us entire access to the kubernetes cluster okay and we don't want people who want to do let's say deployment and management of a particular application we don't want to give them access to the entire cluster isn't it there was something called tiller concept in helm okay helm tiller where or through which the entire cluster was exposed so earlier in version 2 we are not going to deal with version 2 okay it's now outdated we are going to work, work with version 3 okay and of course you will not have helm on your machine so i'll show you maybe i can guide you through the steps of installing helm okay the steps are slightly different on windows on on linux and on mac okay i'll show on one of them and you can easily do something similar but still uh why helm 2 was very powerful at the same time quite scary i'll tell you that okay so when you install helm there was something called helm client cli which was uh, i mean helm client which was cli approach uh, it is still cli okay but then internally it communicated with a server okay where something called a component called tiller was available okay um it was basically available uh, right in the cluster got it tiller was running inside the cluster so the helm cli client will send your chart to the tiller of course when i say chart it's basically an archive of all our yaml files packaged together as one single unit isn't it so all that we are put together and then it was sending them to the tiller and tiller will run these yaml files in the kubernetes cluster to create the components okay 
so look carefully where is the tiller it was basically inside the server so it received your yaml files and then created the components okay so whenever you modify any of the yaml file okay so tiller basically would keep a copy of the changes whenever you modify and send a new yaml file tiller will store a copy of all the previous configurations plus what is deployed right now okay everything was stored got it and then because it was storing all the old and the current configuration it allows us to roll back to a specific version okay because tiller was able to okay keep a history of all the charts or the earlier deployments okay this is what usually it used to happen earlier right so for example you have installed let's say for the first time let's call this as version 1 or revision 1 and then you will send the next set of yaml files and you will say this is my revision 2 and then i want to upgrade the existing version 1 to 2 so for the first time you will give the command helm install and the second time you'll say helm upgrade and tiller would keep track of all the changes which have been happening so it knows which yaml files were used for revision 1 and which ram yaml files were used for revision 2 okay so tiller would keep track of all these and because of that okay we were able to do package management using helm okay this was wonderful approach no doubt about it but there is a downside for it what is the downside tiller has too much power inside the kubernetes cluster so if you look at this figure right tiller was right inside the cluster okay so it had access to the entire cluster and if i am running applications from let's say uh, different clients okay or different accounts inside the same cluster now that would be something which is very dangerous isn't it so in such case tiller would have access not only to your application but also can have access to other applications as well so this approach used by helm 2 was discarded in the next version okay so yes anybody who found this to be attractive did use it okay and if they were very much aware of basically what helm can do and how it is beneficial as long as you keep track of okay making sure that you are isolating the workload of everyone from each other then that is all good but still tiller has too much power so we want to basically minimize what tiller can do inside the cluster okay so they came up with helm version 3 so in helm version 3 if you compare with this figure right so what is the difference that you observe here so tiller is gone in version 3 and whatever job tiller was supposed to do basically maintain the configuration information so that it will be helpful for release management in future so whatever tiller was doing those responsibilities were shifted at the client side so helm can do that on our behalf now so we don't have to rely on tiller and this was much safer because when you are interacting through the cli okay you are interacting as a particular user and what can that user do inside the cluster that would be limited based on uh, the access control or the authorization that user has inside the cluster right what can a particular user do in a cluster that is controlled using something called rbac right role based access control so a user uh, who is who is recognized as a cluster user right so what can what can that user do inside the cluster that would that will be de determined by the role of the user so if you know about the security concept or if you are coming from a cloud background like azure or aws you might have heard about this term called roles isn't it or you might be using this in your day to day life also what can a user do determined by the role of the user so same thing is is available in kubernetes as well okay and to limit what a user can do we have a feature called rbac yeah we haven't seen that we'll have a look at rbac later uh, but yes so that concept is applicable here also okay so keeping that in mind do you think helm 3 is much more safer than helm 2 
right a quick intro to helm so before we can start using helm obviously we have to install it okay i will show that in the next few minutes but any questions up to what we have discussed so far so those who were attending from day 1 kubernetes day 1 Do you remember how we have installed kubectl? Anybody remembers that? How we installed kubectl? Uh, no. Uh, did I did I show you installing it through Chocolaty? And did I also tell you that when you have Docker desktop, you get kubectl along with it? Those who practiced on Windows, you remember these things. when you install docker desktop because docker desktop comes bundled with kubernetes right you already get kubectl bundled along with docker desktop right so you don't have to separately install kubectl command right uh but suppose let's say you are working with minikube or uh, okay and you don't want to work, go for docker desktop then kubectl is something that you have to explicitly or manually install so either you can download it and keep it in the path or you can use your package manager to keep that in the path okay you can do any of the activities so sbin folder contains executables which you need to have administrative privileges to run okay so that's the difference between bin and sbin so for example if i want to find out where is python okay so i can say which python okay it says python is in user bin whereas helm has went into s bin s bin means basically super user s means super user super user bin so unless you have administrative privileges you will not be able to run the utility or the executables which are there in s bin but then yes if i am in a group of sudo then i have administrative privileges right there you go so this is basically these are my groups i am in the group of sudo that means i have administrative privileges now since i have administrative privileges i can use the uh, executables of s bin okay right so what i have done is following the installation steps available here right following the installation steps available here i have just installed this on my ubuntu machine okay one by one i have executed those commands just to make sure that these commands are working without any issue okay so i have installed them and you say helm space version to know that yes you have installed helm with you yeah i verified that i have helm with me okay that's step number 1 because unless you have helm you will not be able to do it there are some other uh, commands i mean other ways of installing it okay like um, this was something which was this step was something that used to be followed for uh, 64 bit linux machines and all that but this was slightly older one okay nowadays they have ready made commands specified for uh, operating systems right so you just follow this rather than what is there in the document okay and if you don't want to see all these details when you say helm version we are getting lot of details right just say dash dash short and you will see only the helm version is shown 3.11.3 enough okay that's it and then uh, to have access to the helm repo you are supposed to add to existing packages we'll discuss more about this later not now okay so helm repo remember in this figure i told you there is something called helm repo which will have which is like a storage for our charts okay so if you want to have access to that charts you need to basically uh, add the repository okay to get access to the existing packages so we'll do that later not now the first step basically is you should install helm and be ready with it now that you have helm with us right the next thing is we have to start working with helm charts okay so what is helm chart if you remember it's basically the packaging of all your manifests into one single deployable unit okay it and you can give a version to that unit that is what is your application version okay so helm chart allows you to revision or version your manifest files 
for example if you would like to work with let's say node.js okay just take an example because node.js is very popular I'm taking that example so you will specify your application depends on which version of node.js isn't it so you can give versioning so that is what chart allows us to do as well so when your charts have versions you can clearly pick up which version of the chart that you want to work with you want you want to install which version or you want to update to the which version okay that is what basically chart all about okay uh, basically we are trying to associate a specific version of a chart with a particular deployment in the cluster okay so that is what chart allows us to do so how should we create a chart a simple command helm create and give the chart name 